In most survival games, the sky occupies a large portion of the screen at any point in time. It can really break the immersion if done incorrectly. I wanted to add some realism to my game, so I spent a couple of weeks figuring out how to calculate the positions of the sun, stars, moon and planets to have a physically accurate sky. Now I'm no physicist, but I'll walk you through the steps that I took. The appearance of the sky obviously varies depending on the observer's position on Earth and the time they are viewing the sky. This means that all our calculations will be based on the latitude and longitude on Earth at a given date and time. So let's start with the stars. Due to the stars being very distant, they don't move enough relative to the Earth, meaning that the stars' apparent positions will move based on the rotation of the Earth. To display the stars in the sky, let's draw a cube at a very far distance away from the camera and apply a star cube map texture that is freely available on the NASA website. The stars are already looking decent, although they do not move currently. To make the stars be positioned correctly, we need to calculate the side real time and then rotate the sky box. The side real time is defined as the time scale that is based on the Earth's rate of rotation relative to the fixed stars, meaning this is the perfect calculation for us to find where our stars should be. So once we've calculated it, the rotation of our sky box will then be equal to the latitude on the x-axis and the side real time on the y-axis. Now if we play around with the latitude and longitude and the date and time, you can see the sky box moving the stars to the correct position. Let's improve the appearance of our stars by adding some emission. This can be done by multiplying the star's colour by a value larger than 1. Bloom will do the rest of the work for us. We can also multiply the output of the skybox with a scrolling noise texture to give the illusion of the stars twinkling, causing the stars to be dimmed and undimmed over time. A fun feature that's easily added here that most likely won't be used in Rift Division is the easy display of star constellations. On the same link as the star map is a perfectly matching constellation map. This addition is as simple as adding the two colours together in the shader to get an overlay of the constellations. Having the stars in the sky is great and will allow the player to theoretically navigate the game world using the North Star due to its static nature in the sky. Before I discuss how the rest is calculated, I just wanted to give a big thanks to my first Patreon subscriber, Mr Macaroni Man, for their support on Patreon. Links in the description if you're interested in supporting the development of Rift Division. So the next thing we need to do is calculate the sun's position so that a proper day-night cycle can occur. This involves a lot more complex calculations than the distant stars, so I'll try to explain this as simple as possible. Firstly, the geocentric ecliptical latitude and longitude must be calculated. This is essentially the angular distance from an imaginary plane that lies on the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The geocentric ecliptical latitude and longitude are then used to calculate the angles of the Sun relative to the axis of rotation of the Earth. These are called the right ascension and declination, with the right ascension being equivalent to the horizontal rotation and declination being the vertical rotation. By subtracting the right ascension from the side real time we used earlier for the stars, we can then get the hour angle, which is the angular distance westward from the observer's location. This is useful as this angle is now relative to our observer, which is what we want. This can finally then be used in combination with the latitude and declination to get the rotation that can then be set in unity using some trigonometric functions. Here's the vertical equation and here's the horizontal equation. The sun's path in the sky is now very realistic and if we change the time of year from summer to winter in a position in the northern hemisphere, you can see that the sun's path is now much closer to the horizon and the days are shorter just like in real life. One other thing to note is that when the sun rises, the stars should not be visible. This can probably be solved in many ways but the way I chose to do this is use the inverse of the sun direction as the strength of the stars, meaning that when the stars are facing the opposite way to the sun, they will be bright, and when they're next to the sun, they will be completely faded. The other planets can be calculated in a similar way, although the difference is that before we can calculate the geocentric ecliptical latitude and longitude, we must calculate the positions relative to the sun. You can now see why this is skipped for the sun. The mean anomaly and true anomaly can be used to calculate this position, where the mean anomaly is the fraction throughout the orbit relative to the closest point from the sun and the true anomaly is the angle from the closest point. The position can then be calculated and once we've done that we can now draw the planets in the sky. I've given each of the planets the colour that they appear in the sky in real life and now when we look at time lapse of the night sky you can see the planets moving differently to the background stars as they're close to the earth. Now if you thought that that was complex the moon is even worse. To calculate the moon's position accurately considering its complex orbit around the earth numerous terms must be calculated. For simplicity whilst keeping decent accuracy we'll only account for the largest terms. This should be fine for a video game as 100% accuracy is a bit overkill. I won't go into details but the geocentric latitude and longitude are calculated along with the distance from the sun using these equations and then the same process can be followed as the planets. We can place the moon in the sky box by mapping a sphere onto the 2D surface. This will come in handy when texturing. The way this works is by using a sphere intersect function in our shader that takes a sphere position and a radius and will return the distance from the centre of the sphere if there is an intersection. A minus 
minus 1 if there's no intersection. The function looks like this for anyone curious. The moon is looking a bit too plain. It needs a proper man in the moon look that we're used to seeing. Thankfully, NASA have another cube map texture that we can use to texture the projected sphere in the skybox. This is looking much better, but it would be good if we could calculate the proper moon phase too. As we have projected a 3D sphere into our skybox, this is as simple as taking the dot product between the sun and the surface of our projected sphere. This will give the moon a basic lighting model that properly reacts to the position of the sun. But before we can do that, the surface normal of the sphere needs to be calculated. To calculate this, it's as simple as taking the intersection point on the sphere and subtracting it from the moon direction. The intersection point in this case is just the view direction multiplied by the value returned from our function. We could leave it here and have a good realistic skybox for any game, but I wanted to take it one step further. There are natural phenomenon that can occur between the sun, moon and earth that I'd like to model, the first being a solar eclipse. This is when the moon passes in front of the sun, either partially or fully, blocking out the light from the sun during the daytime. This can be quite easily added to the sky by checking if the sun and the moon are both facing the same direction. If they are, darken the whole sky and change the colour of the moon to black. The effect this gives is extremely satisfying. The other phenomenon is a lunar eclipse, which is when the earth's shadow is cast onto the moon, although due to the way that light scatters, the moon appears red instead of completely black. This is also known as a blood moon. The way we calculate this is by doing the opposite of our solar eclipse equation and checking if the direction of the sun and the moon are completely opposite. We can then tint the moon red during this event to give a nice blood moon. If you're interested in the maths behind all these calculations, I'll leave the resources I used in the description. Alternatively, if you want to add the end result into your own Unity project, I have all the code and visuals for this sky packaged into a Unity asset available on the Unity Asset Store. Let's take a look at what the end result is. So that's the sky complete. I think this really adds to the overall immersion in game and definitely beats a non-physically based skybox. I'd love to know what you think. If you like this video, you should go watch one of these videos here and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.